Hello, everybody. Doing an Instagram live. Um, but here I am. Me and, and Inca, too. Yeah, that's right. You, Inca. Here we are. Yeah, Inca, you're on Instagram live, too. Yes. Yeah. That's my that's my doggy. My little pooch. Yeah, she's very protective of me. Follows me around the house. And I thought it was because she was just, like, adoring, you know. But then um, one of our friends who's an animal communicator pointed out that actually, like, she thinks I really need need her care and protection. And uh, that in our family, the top dog is Stella. And next comes Inca. And then I'm a notch below that. So she's actually condescending to, um, you know, take care of me and... and Lick my lick my hand all the time when it needs cleaning, and um, yeah. So anyway, um, those of you who care for my well being will be happy to know that I have uh, Inca around to keep me uh, safe. So, as for the trippy story, so okay, so a few days ago I did this. Uh, I called it the State of the World Address, which was a little bit of a play on the State of the Union Address. Um, not that I have pretensions of being, you know, anything official, but um, so I talked about a bunch of stuff. I started talking about some world events, you know, and then somehow I got into the topic of UFOs and disclosure and things like that. And I don't know, I went on and, and we were we had it on Zoom and we we're also broadcasting to YouTube. So it turns out that when when we went to look at the YouTube recording of the event, um, there were 55 seconds missing. And strangely enough, those 55 seconds corresponded exactly to when I started talking about UFOs. It was as if, as if somebody decided to like censor that, which was, which is like a paranoid thing to think because I mean, there is tons of content on YouTube about UFOs and even stranger, more controversial topics. Why would they, you know, censor 55 seconds of a, you know, me, an obscure countercultural philosopher, just saying some innocuous things about UFOs and disclosure? I mean, I wasn't like, you know, challenging the Illuminati or anything like that. It was, it was you know, quite a philosophical take on it. So it was really weird. And I wondered, okay, like what, you know, so I wrote a post on, on Substack asking, you know, what happened here? I, I advanced some theories, you know, could just be totally a coincidence, could be, you know, a warning from whatever nefarious powers not to, or that just or a message that they're watching me or whatever, um, or like some censorship algorithm run amok, who knows, right? But I, but I wanted to know, you know, was it censored or altered after it was posted or did it somehow happen in real time? So I asked people if they noticed a glitch when they were watching in real time. And the weird thing is that a lot of people did. They said, yeah, you froze for those 55 seconds. But a lot of other people who also watched it on YouTube said, no, no, I, I remember you saying those things because I wrote a transcript. So it was like reality bifurcated into two pieces. <laughs> like, how could it be that it that that the whole thing was and was not on YouTube? Now, there are actually probably mundane explanations, like YouTube actually has multiple channels for streaming. I mean, there might be Monday explanations, but the thing is, just like, even if it is totally coincidence, just like some streaming software glitch or something like that, it's still pretty weird that it would happen just at that moment, just when I started talking about UFOs. Now, the the modern mind steeped in Cartesian objectivity thinks that Either it did or it did not happen. That, that, and and that, if 
there if that part was like that, that there's no other choice besides either it was random or some intelligent agent uh you know removed that material but there's another alternative which we'll call it synchronicity which is that when you enter a certain reality bubble a certain belief system but it's more than just a belief system because beliefs are not just intellectual constructs they correspond to a state of being as well when you enter into that and start investigating it events in your experience begin to align with that reality so for example if you investigate the paranormal weird things start happening to you if you start you know, talking about coincidences and then like all of a sudden you start seeing like the number 11 everywhere, you know. And is it just that you're noticing it more or is that orientation magnetizing it into your experience? So here you start talking about UFOs and disclosure and things like that and weird things start happening. And it's not because some some conspirators somewhere, some nefarious control freaks or secret agents of the Illuminati are messing with you. It's much more mysterious than that. It's hard for the modern mind to conceive of events organizing in meaningful ways without the imposition of a human intelligence upon that. Because we don't understand that the universe is itself intelligent. And that that so-called objective reality is not actually objective, but is but responds to our state of consciousness of which beliefs are one aspect. So really, this trippy little incident is kind of a gateway to um, a very mystical worldview. And yeah, it'll be interesting. What would be really funny is if like this video disappears You know, once you open the doorway to non-objective reality, which doesn't mean that everything's our imagination. This isn't like some kind of solipsism that says that human beings create reality. It's more of, in my view, more of a co-creative process in which we are definitely the junior partners, but it, but there is a a mysterious and an intimate relationship between the reality that we experience and our beliefs and our consciousness, which doesn't mean that you can just change your belief through an act of will and believe something else. And then, you know, the gifts of prosperity will rain down upon you. Because as I said, beliefs are part of a much bigger state of being, a much bigger state of consciousness. And if the beliefs are not compatible with, you know, the, the unhealed wounds and the traumas and the programs that we carry and with the dramas that we are born to fulfill. If they're not compatible with all those, then you won't really be able to hold that belief very well. You may have tried, you know, I mean, I used to, I used to try when I was in my 20s, I got really into creative visualization. That was the book back then about how, you know, to create your reality. And I tried, you know, but every time I ran these affirmations, there was part of me that's like, really? Yeah, I'll believe it when I see it, you know, because I wasn't really in a place to um, fully take on those new beliefs. And that is not a matter of not trying hard enough. And it's not like that you know, oh, I had too much negativity and negativity is bad, you know, and you're supposed to transcend your negativity and just be positive because, I mean, even organizing the world into negativity and positivity, that is already a flattening of reality. I think much more in terms of theater, you know, in terms of drama, in terms of the stories that we are born into, the, the the relationships, the roles, this in this this incredible dramatic production of the human experience, 
that we were born into in order to fulfill a, um, a, a yearning of the soul to develop in a certain way. And so certain conditions, whatever conditions we're born into, facilitate a certain kind of development. They pose their own challenges, their failures, their triumphs, their defeats, um, their trials, uh, their tragedies. And we grow in our engagement with all of those. So there's nothing wrong with you for being, for having taken on the set of circumstances that you've taken on. Which doesn't mean to resign yourself to them because the growth comes in meeting these challenges and trying to change your circumstances and trying to change the circumstances of others too. And not to say, well, you know, their soul chose that, you know, so too bad, you know, too bad, you know, Palestinian child, you know, too bad. No, no, no. We're, 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 that is part of the drama is our, our human response to the circumstances of others and ourselves. Oh, so anyway, um, hey, everybody, I see people waving at me. That's very kind of you. And I'm not going to go on too much longer, I don't think. Um, and I will try to uh, save this video. Um, yeah, and I, I, I will continue exploring these topics in my future State of the World. I think I might call it something else. I don't think I want to call it State of the World Address anymore. It sounds a little pretentious, you know. And I'm not like standing up on a lectern and giving an address. I'm more of just uh, kind of saying what's on my mind. I like to be a little bit more playful, you know, and I kind of set myself up in the State of the World Address for too much. I felt like a little under pressure. I want to keep it more more chill and more fun. So that's what I'll do next time. And I'll try to remember to announce it here. I'm not very good with with uh, Instagram. Like all of a sudden it said your fundraiser will not be like what? I didn't set up a fundraiser. What are we talking about here? It's really confusing Instagram. But I did figure out how to do Instagram live, as you can see. And I will continue doing those from time to time. And thank you, everybody, for, for tuning in. It's fun. I'll do it again sometime. Bye.